Welcome and hello. Today on Caffeine Zombies, we're going to be taking a look at part two of the Destiny versus Gorka debate. Now, keep that in mind, this is part two. So if you want to start over from the beginning, just go ahead and hit the channel. There should be a link up there and it'll bring you back to part one and walk you through this entire playlist. Where we left off was just introductions. Gorka had just talked about what he envisioned it looked like when you loved your country versus you didn't love your country as a leader. And that's where we're going to start basically today is when Destiny comes back to refute those topics as if they were talking about Biden uh, versus Trump, of course. Uh, so that's kind of what they're representing in those cases. Uh, so in this case, it's his refutal that his rebuttal that maybe Biden would have against Trump, for instance. So let's get going. One of the most interesting things that happened with conservatives is this idea that they found a, a common man who's not a part of the elite to champion their causes. And it happens to be a billionaire real estate uh, mogul from New York City that was essentially born with a silver spoon. I think that's incredibly interesting. Now, if you went back and watched part one, you'd know I said I was going to cut out as much of the kind of character assassination type stuff from the video as possible. I already did in this part of rebuttal or a scenario from Destiny. What I think remains is this interesting aspect that he brings up about how people were really looking for an outsider. That's how Bernie Sanders was doing so well and how, why in part Trump was doing so well. They were seen as outsiders from the political elite. Now, that all said, the kind of elitist mentality and established mentality that Destiny is trying to connect is the wealthy kind of establishment and the political elite and how those two pieces kind of come together and connected. So in that way, it would be strange about the Silver Spoon piece, uh, which I don't think we need a lot of evidence for. Uh, Trump, even on his own, said he inherited, he uh, not inherited, but he was loaned a million dollars from his dad to get his real estate business going. That's been shown to have happened multiple times. There's even reports of him getting essentially $200,000 a year since he was very, very young, uh, which would be equivalent to more of like a million dollars a year today, uh, to all the way up to inheriting up to $413 million through um, some kinds of deals similar to what he was doing uh, in some of his lawsuits, which was like establishing low cost, selling it to so Fred Sr., uh, Fred Trump, selling it to his kids um, at a low value, and then those kids inheriting that uh, freely or with low taxes, and then being able to go turn around and sell it for 16 times its worth. Uh, those sorts of stories don't really matter whether or not they're true or they're false. I did put in some evidence if people do want to go dig into that reading. But the point is, we all agree Donald Trump is incredibly wealthy, has been part of that wealthy world for quite some time, and that is inexorably linked with the problem that we have when we say the political elite. We're going to see what Gorka has to say about this in a few moments. Um, when you talk about, like, I mean, we could go into family stuff. I think it's interesting that people are so critical about Hunter Biden when Kushner is signing multi-billion dollar deals with Saudi Arabia, when Kushner was working in... Hold on, but that's yeah. what about is right? <laughs> that's not, like, Hunter Biden could be a bad guy and Jared Kushner could be doing whatever you say he's doing. Those are not... Sure, I'm not, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's not a one about because it's not a defense of Hunter. I think it's more remarking that it's interesting what conservatives that are fans of Trump are selectively, selectively skeptical mm -hmm. of. What aboutisms are a kind of tactic oftentimes used to deflect from the point that's being given to something else that might seemingly be related on the surface, but really isn't um, actually against the point, is a kind of counter accusation. Uh, the Soviet Union would do this all the time. If we called them inhumane on something during the Cold War, they'd be like, well, what about when you did all of these things? It, that may be true. We may have done the thing that they're saying we did, but it doesn't remove the fact that it was probably against humanitarian needs at the time, right? Uh, someone could say, hey, you're drinking too much, and then you could turn around and say, well, what about you? You're doing a lot of weed, right? Like that could be one of those examples uh, that flips. Well, both of those things could be true, and both of those accusations could be actually valid, and both of them could be necessary to kind of work through. That neither one of those things makes it the other, you know, the other one untrue or uh, invalid. 
Now, where whataboutisms can actually be good, uh, like a useful or beneficial tactic, is to sort of point out bias. When you take two things that seem similar, and then you see how either they're reported on, or they're talked about, or they're used. So like if I said, I don't like liars, and that's why I don't like Joe Biden, but then somebody goes to the effort and says, well, what about Trump? He also lies. That might show that kind of bias. Do you also still like him, even though he's lying? Right. And then you could establish, of course, if there was a lie or not a lie. But a lot of times people then back up and just say, well, it wasn't as bad. Uh, well, that's not the point. The point is you stated all liars. Right. So that's where this can kind of get into play. And we'll see where destiny goes with it to sort of just differentiate. Is this a bias based conversation or is this just a counter accusation to deflect from the topic? that if Biden had, had created a position in the White House for his son Hunter to work under, and then he had sent his son to go and negotiate on behalf of the United States, and then afterwards his son was signing multi-billion dollar deals for companies that he worked with, this is like Burisma, but 100 million times worse, because it's in the official capacity as a government worker while being related to a president who didn't divest I, I guess all I'm saying, yeah. sorry to interject, I really yeah, want no, you to get the time, but I, I just, that argument could be played the other way. If, if, if uh, Donald Trump had had a son like Hunter Biden who was doing what Hunter Biden did, everyone on the left would be outraged too, right? So you I don't could really play hear many that... people on the left talking about uh, Kushner that much, considering how crazy those deals that, that, are. I but... mean, people have talked about it less, it's true. Sure. Anyway, I, well, as for Hunter Biden, I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene has pictures of him uh, in Congress. I don't know if you saw that. And left all of that in because I think they do a really good back and forth. And this is how a uh, kind of debate should actually take place where he, Destiny was pushed back against, hey, this, is, this sounds like a whataboutism, and it was interjected and, and interrupted. And then Destiny was able to defend the fact that, like, hey, it's not really a whataboutism because I'm not defending Hunter or even defending, you know, people who might be on the side of Hunter Biden or Joe Biden by saying, hey, well, what about this other thing? What I'm really trying to showcase is this bias or this disconnect that I'm seeing in the logic processing or the logic choices that the right is making, that they're okay with the Jared Kushner stuff, which seems very similar, but not so okay with the Hunter Biden stuff. And the reason for that doesn't seem to be the crime or the degree of the crime, because they're really going after even Burisma, if all the allegations were true, uh, going after that, but not going after the known to be true uh, and already kind of proven to be fact, uh, Jared Kushner earnings uh, from Saudi Arabia. So like that kind of stuff plays out really well, and it does indicate a kind of bias. I would actually give some pretty good props to Destiny for not only staying with the argumentation, pushing back against it, uh, walking through the process and the thinking with it, and then going forward. This is a worthwhile example to keep, if for nothing other than uh, the validity of what a what, what a what about him is. In terms of like, what would you do if you wanted to make the country worse? I mean, I can think of several things. I would encourage my supporters to lead an insurrection on the Capitol. Let's be fair. Uh, Donald Trump was not charged with inciting an insurrection. That's actually um, absent from the January 6th charges, which is what I'm assuming he's kind of isolating this to, because I don't think the Georgia or the New York cases include any commentary about insurrection. But in the actual federal case from Jack Smith, it's one count of conspiracy to defraud the United States, one count of conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, which was the election of the president, and one count of obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, and one count of conspiracy against rights, in specific, the rights to vote because of the fake electors. So there's a lot there and probably similarly bad compared to an insurrection, but I want to be clear. Uh, he wasn't charged with inciting an insurrection, though colloquially or culturally, we might just call it that, even though that is a, a specific kind of thing and it hasn't yet been proven. I would try to say that the election results weren't real. I would claim that the election was fake uh, before even coming into office, which he did for before his first term. All right, Disney brings up two points. One I just went over, which is uh, the covered in the four counts. Uh, so actually kind of trying to actually... Uh, Firstly, affect or obstruct the elections, can fake electors, that sort of thing. Um, the second one was him claiming that there are fake uh, elections happening even before his first term. Now, I found this clip where he calls them specifically, just to be semantically clear, 
rigged elections. Uh, but he's even saying that it's rigged where it shouldn't even be happening, which would me say implicitly fake. Uh, but he's talking about Hillary Clinton and the crimes she's been committed up, which to me is a little ironic. But watch this clip. Mr. Trump, I want to ask you about one last question in, the, in this topic. You have been warning at re rallies recently that this election is rigged and that Hillary Clinton is in the process of trying to steal it from you. Your running mate, Governor Pence, pledged on Sunday that he and you, his words, will absolutely accept the result of this election. Today, your daughter Ivanka said the same thing. I want to ask you here on the stage tonight, do you make the same commitment that you will absolutely, sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election? I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt, and the pile-on is so amazing. The New York Times actually wrote an article about it that they don't even care. It's so dishonest, and they've poisoned the minds of the voters. But unfortunately for them, I think the voters are seeing through it. I think they're going to see through it. We'll find out on November 8th, but I think they're going to see but, through but, it. But, sir, there's if a... you look, excuse me, Chris, if you look at your voter rolls, you will see millions of people that are registered to vote, millions. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from Pew Report and other places. Millions of people that are registered to vote <clears throat> that shouldn't be registered to vote. So let me just give you one other thing. So I talk about the corrupt media. I talk about the millions of people. I'll tell you one other thing. She shouldn't be allowed to run. It's cro it, she's, she's guilty of a very, very serious crime. She should not be allowed to run. And just in that respect, I say it's rigged. Um, I probably start to gain notoriety or popularity in the political world by suggesting that the current president was born in Kenya, not the United States. Let's take a look at a 2011 clip where Donald Trump can't really agree that Obama is born in the United States. It's good enough for the state of Hawaii and the State Department. Okay. The U.S. State Department recognizes these as well, legitimately... It's not a birth certificate, Candy. And people are trying to figure out why isn't he giving his birth certificate. It's not a birth certificate. A lot of people forget, but that's how Trump initially picked up his popularity. It was with the birth certificate stuff uh, with Barack Obama. Uh, yeah, I think that Trump fundamentally has no respect for any part of this country. That's why he suggested suspending the Constitution so that he could look for voter fraud. And out a little bit about what was uh, said because he was bolstering like he was pro Biden and anti Trump with just kind of characterizations of the two. Uh, but this is actually a point that could be researched. So, what I wanted to pull up was uh, this archive because Trump deleted it a few days after he posted it when he started getting called out on it. But on December 3rd, 2022nd, according to the archive, we have a copy of it still kind of saved. Uh, so with the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception and working closely with big tech companies, the DNC and the Democratic Party, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner? Or do you have a new election? The massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. So to be clear, he did not specifically or explicitly say, let's suspend the Constitution, but the Constitution is really a document of rules and regulations and articles. And he's saying, throw those out in order to go after uh, this fraudulent election and basically overturn the results. That was as late as December 3rd, 2022, and we're still talking about the 2020 election results that had been time and time again uh, kind of proven to be true. So I would agree with Destiny in this case that um, that does show that there was a suspension of the Constitution. I wouldn't necessarily say that that says you have no respect for the country, though it's hard to argue your way out of that. There's a way to say, I have so much respect for the country, thinking of the people that make up the country and their interplay, that I would want to go around the rules preventing me from saving them as it were or protecting them from this illegitimate election I, I could see that twist of logic happening but it'd be really hard to get into that mindset without fundamentally sort of changing or having no respect for a major part of the united states which is the u.s constitution um, so I'll hand this one slightly over to Destiny because there is the factual statement of 
kind of the suspension of the constitution and then the hard to find another way of seeing the, the respect but i wouldn't go so far as to say we absolutely know that donald trump doesn't have respect for the country because of that it's why before getting elected he said that people that burn the flag are one of our most important first amendment protected rights should have their citizenship stripped from them which is insane well, I actually didn't know that Donald Trump posted this, but apparently he did, although he did give them the option of loss of citizenship or a year in jail. Either way, making it a criminal offense, this first protection right, uh, going against that, uh, that just seems bad. You, you may hate the fact that people are allowed to burn the American flag or do whatever they want with it, basically, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that that's what a free country is. It's agreeing that certain things are protected even when you disagree with them even when you don't like them that's how freedom of speech works there's lots of things like that um that's the constitution it just shows a disrespect for that again um, and i would also probably try to undermine the current sitting president and the current sitting congress by telling them that they're not allowed to get things done on the border because if we keep that as a real problem it'll help me in the next election cycle which is why we weren't able to pass any bipartisan border legislation to actually fix the asylum problem that we have right now that the current government's hands are tied on all right so this last little bit was destiny talking about how donald trump attempted to actually shut down the border bill uh which you know, he indicated in speeches, hey, if you want to blame it on me, blame it on me because I'd fight this all the way. Uh, he did pressure people. He did indicate that he didn't think that the bill was right unless we got 100% of everything exactly that we wanted to shut down all of the crossings to zero. Of course, it would be impossible. He also indicated that he didn't like the border bill because he didn't have to do with the border bill, but his executive action actually required Mexico to agree with part of the process, and Mexico would no longer agree with that same program because it was found to be inhumane. So there's a lot of things in there, but the fact of the matter is that, yes, Donald Trump is taking credit for uh, allowing people to give him the credit or the blame, as the case may be on whichever side, uh, that he actually helped to shut down the bill, and thus. Yes, he did. The rest of that is about um, kind of switching sides. Uh, the Democrats are using this bill as a political like push to say, hey, you shut this down. We wanted to do something about it. Now the ball's in your court. Now, I believe that that's like a legitimate handoff, uh, but I would also say that it took them a while to get there, uh, in part because the Democrats have, you know, a particular demographic to work with and particular groups of people, but they also don't want to do just something that's inhumane or uh, that may cause uh, families and children not to be able to come across, uh, especially legitimately seeking asylum, which is the law of the land. By the way, it's not illegal to seek asylum here. It's part of uh, what was happening during Trump's era, every president before this for quite some time. Um, anyhow, that's it for this one. Uh, for the next video, uh, we'll start with Gorka's response and go from there. Okay, so part two is done. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.